I'd like to introduce uh, Fabio, Aaron, and Andrew and Yang's team, the ISO Blue team. They'll be introducing ISO Blue Avena. Folks, take it away. Hey, thank you, Ankita. Um, why did you go full screen? So, um, my name is Aaron Neustetter. I'm part of the ISO Blue Avena team, along with Fabio Castiblanco, Andrew Balmos. Uh, Yang Wang, myself, and Matt Rogers, and we're going to do a technical demo showcasing some of the um, some of the things that the ISO Blue can do um, in in real time. Go ahead and give us the next slide, Yang, please. Um, so this is a live demo, so you can go ahead and send a text message to the phone number on the screen above and you'll be participating in it. Uh, we'll be showcasing how the ISO Blue's um, data informatics and edge computing can be used to send a text message notification based on the um, some of the properties of the machine. In this case, we'll be sending a text message when the machine over revs. Um, so we'll do a quick review of what the ISO Blue is, and then we'll go into the um, and then we'll go into the demo, introduce Fabio and the machine itself, and we'll showcase that. Um, so ISO Blue Havana is a very large um, framework that encompasses a lot of different capabilities and stuff like that, which makes it pretty difficult to um, showcase a specific showcase the entire thing. So we chose to showcase a specific functionality that we created for this demo. Um, and the story that we had behind this was um, you are a farmer with multiple different operators running underneath you that um, and one of the operators uh, tends to run the machine a little harder and a little faster than the rest of them. So you want a notification of when the machine is running harder, when the revs are higher um, than they should be so that you can see what's going on and maybe um, help uh, further educate this operator on how to better run your machine and not blow your um, motor. This picture is actually uh, one of Aaron Alt's combines that uh, he managed to light on fire a, a couple of years ago. But um, <clears throat> with that, uh, this is our ISO Blue device. It's one of the ones that is sitting in our New Holland tractor out in AB building right now. It's a ARM Cortex board with uh, four cores and about two gigabytes of RAM, just enough processing power to do the edge computing that we need. It's equipped with a GPS uh, module as well as a cell connection to allow us to bring the data that we collect back into the cloud. And then a CAN connection you can see on the left that connects to the vehicle diagnostic port. And this allows us to um, read what's going on with the machine. Uh, next slide, please. So um, just a little high level um, summary of how this is going through. We have three different Docker containers, which is a, a small and efficient way to containerize code while keeping it separate from the rest of the machine. We start with a J1939 module that reads the CAN data directly from the bus. It then publishes it onto a message broker called NATS. This um, provides a central data hub for all the things that the ISO Blue is uh, sensing and allows other containers to read this data that's being sensed and process it. In this case, the SMS messenger container can then read the um, whichever data it chooses and so and send notifications to different users. So um, in this example, it's reading only the RPM data. It doesn't have to worry about the rest of it and it doesn't have to worry about how that data is being collected. And in addition, the other two containers do not have to worry about managing the subscribers or managing the notifications that are being sent out. Uh, this compartmentalization and uh, modularity allows different modules to be swapped in and out easier, as well as reducing the complexity of each of the modules themselves. <clears throat> Go ahead and hit the next slide, Young. Um, so to take a little bit of a closer look at this, um, this is a closer example of the pipeline stages as well as some example output. Um, again, we have the J1939 container that reads CAN directly from the bus as bytes and then publishes it onto our raw NAT stream simply as it sees. So the reason we do this, I have this two stage pipeline that reads it raw and then interprets it is CAN has uh, 
a lot of different ways to be interpreted. For those who have worked with it, it's typically called a, um, a DRB file. Um, it's a dictionary that allows us to interpret these files and on different machines and with different companies, these definitions can change, um, as well as there tend to be a lot of different intellectual property um, and other agreements that require that these dictionaries that allow interpretation of these values to, um, to makes it hard to distribute this. So by publishing the raw data and then um, interpreting later, we can enable different devices on different machines to use different files to interpret it. Uh, and then from there, we have the NATS to SMS container that um, sends out a text message when the engine has surpassed a certain set point of RPMs. In this case, we chose 1500 just so we didn't have to wake up the entire building when we started revving up the tractor right outside. Uh, go ahead and hit the next slide. So this is a, um, to showcase, as I mentioned before, how easy it, or how short the code needs to be just to send the message. There's a lot of stuff that goes on in the background that we've already written for ISO Blue Havana, but that means the notification code can be quite short and quite simple. Um, almost less than 15 lines here. So simply we connect to our NATS message bus. We write a simple handler that handles each time it receives a new message. In this case, it checks if the RPMs are above 1500 and then sends out a text message using the Twilio API once it has that. And then we um, subscribe to the J1939.EngineSpeed subject, which will give us um, a message every time it hears the RPMs. Um, please note for the data, for the code that we're using for the demo, there did require a little bit of extra code to handle the signups, the registrations for notifications, which adds a small amount of complexity, but still keeps it quite simple uh, compared to what we would have had to done otherwise. Uh, toss me the next slide, Young, please. Um, okay, with that, we'll go ahead and start the demo. If if you haven't already, send a text message to this number to sign up for those notifications. And then I'm going to pass it off to uh, to Fabio. He'll introduce himself, Matt, and the tractor, and uh, we'll get this, ro this rolling. Uh, yes, and Young will also be um, signing up in front of us as well so we can see the, uh, the process live. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, I am Fabio Castellanco, and I'm and today I'm outside the ABE building at Purdue campus. So today we're showcasing one of the main functionalities of ISO Blue Avena. So right now I'm here with a 2011 New Holland T850 tractor. So this is an all-wheel drive tractor. So today what we're going to do, uh, we're gonna turn on the engine and we're going to rev up so we can get a notification. And we are also going to turn on the PTO, which is right behind the tractor. So, so let's begin. Uh, here I am with Matt Rogers, who is helping us today uh, to operate the tractor. And here we have ISOBLE, our IoT device, connected to the diagnostics board. Uh, in the canvas in the tractor. So without further ado, let's turn on the engine. All right, this sounds good. So okay. Okay, everything's starting now. Now we're going to see the panel. So right now we're idling the engine at 900 RPMs. So, so in a few seconds, we're gonna start revving up the engine. So ISO will get uh, that data and we'll send a notification to you. Okay. So let's Go for it, rev the engine. So we're gonna rev it up past 1500 RPMs. Okay. I 
got it. Yeah. There we go. Um, all right. So as we can see on Young's phone screen, as well as those of you who uh, subscribed, we got a notification that the engine surpassed the, um, the R RPMs that were set. Uh, and thought, Young, if you could give me the uh, toss me the presentation, I'd appreciate that. Okay, Matt. Now let's turn on the PTO. Yes, um, and we'll also be enabling the PTO. So, um, what we can do with this is there's a lot of different ways we can crunch this data. We can send notifications as we just showed in the demo, but that's not um, not all we can do. So, for example, what if you want you should also be able to see what was going on when the machines uh, passed those R RPMs. What um, was it for a long time? Was it for a little bit? Was he up a hill um, grinding the thing hard? And this was a use case that was appropriate. Um, and to that SMS is not necessarily a great avenue to convey all that information. Uh, so another thing IsoBlue can do is we can collect this data and we can graph it. So we can use, we use a, um, a a, a program called Grafana, which is pretty popular in the IT world for monitoring computer systems. And we can modify it such that it monitors the tractors that these ISO blue systems are on. Right here, we have a screenshot from a John Deere uh, 977 combine that one of our, one of the farms that we're able to use ISO blue to test on allowed us to um, show. And we have, for example, a map showing everywhere it was, engine speed, uh, fuel usage and pretty much everything else we can collect from the CAN bus. Um, different machines choose to share different amounts of data over the CAN bus. So some machines have a much richer data set that we're able to pull from and other machines less, um, as well as the time, the amount of time the um, machine was on is also a factor in the data that we can see. So we can go ahead and look at the New Holland tractor as well, and we should be able to see the um, similar statistics. And here we can see the um, tractor is in between the ABE building and the Purdue Drug Dis Discovery Facility with a little bit of noise from the uh, GPS module, along with similar statistics like engine speed. We can see right that little blip where we revved it up for the demonstration, as well as other things like service states, uh, engine operation time, uh, whether it's not it's on and off. And in addition, we can also monitor the ISO blue itself, as we can see in the lower left hand corner, CPU usage and network usage and stuff like that to help us monitor and make sure that the um, that the ISO blue itself is working properly. With that, um, we're at just a bunch, just about time. So I, we should be able to take a couple of questions. Um, and if not, thank you. Oh, yes, I did miss that slide. Um, real quick, right before, um, this also allows us to do other research that um, that isn't necessarily showing statistics about the tractor. For example, we have Andrew's research, which is centered around uh, the feasibility of using Wi-Fi as a communication method between different vehicles in the field. So what he does is he has several ISO blues out in the field with Wi-Fi dongles attached to them. And as the, as the vehicles drive around the field, they're constantly trying to search out for each other. And once they connect, they uh, run periodic speed tests and mark down the locations and speeds that they were able to have at that point in time. And this allows him to analyze the feasibility of Wi-Fi as a communication method for tractors specifically um, as they move to autonomy. And down below, we can see several graphs of the tracks that these tractors were taking, as well as the connections and the speeds of those connections. Awesome. Thank you so much, Aaron. That was amazing. I don't know about everybody else, but I felt like I was on the edge of my seat waiting for that notification as y'all were revving up the engine. Um, so I don't know that we have time for questions, so I will introduce the next uh, speaker and we'll take questions at the end. Uh